Hello there fellow Satisfactory Pioneers. I hope you're all having a good old time playing the new Satisfactory 1.0 release. I know I sure am and as part of playing the game I've decided to set up my own dedicated Satisfactory server that I can use to play on. And I thought well while I'm at it why don't I make a nifty little tutorial video so that I can upload to YouTube for everybody else to follow along. This video is going to be much much the same as uh, a number of the other videos that are getting around on YouTube at the moment except there's going to be one thing that's going to set my setup process apart from all the rest. Now that thing is that I actually have custom wrote my own uh, setup script here which I'm going to share with all of you guys down in the description of this video so that you can all just copy and paste and use it for yourselves. So the purpose of this script is to streamline and uh, fully automate the entire setup uh, installation and starting up and running of the satisfactory server the whole point of this is to take all of the hard work out of it, uh, take all of the guesswork out of it and essentially just make it a really easy process for absolutely everybody to be able to do. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get straight into the process of what needs to be done to get this up and running. So first things first, we're going to go into the file explorer. Once we're in the file explorer, you can navigate to any location on the computer that you want, program files, absolutely anywhere. Uh, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to do it in the documents folder. So we need to, we need to create two new folders uh, for files. Uh, and these two folders, the first one here, is going to be for the Steam CMD uh, so we're just going to name that accordingly and the second one is going to be for all of the satisfactory server files to be stored in. Now you can name these whatever you choose uh, it's entirely up to you however the first thing I just want to note is that if you are going to have multiple words in the folder name uh, and just make sure you use underscores don't have any actual physical spaces like this otherwise it'll break the script and the script will not work so if you're going to have multiple words in the folder name just have underscores to space them out and everything should be fine okay cool so next thing we need to do is we need to download steam cmd off the internet so I'm just going to use Google Chrome, nice and easy, just straight to the Google website and we're going to type in Steam CMD. It will more than likely be the first link that pops up from Valve Development Community. Uh, you're just going to hit that one and go straight to that website. Once you're at the website, just click on this Windows link here and it's going to take you further down the page to exactly where we need to be. Uh, and on this link here, clicking on this link here is going to download the actual Steam CMD. Okay, once that's done we get our little notification here to say that it's been downloaded. I'm just going to click straight onto that notification to take us straight to the directory of where that was saved. We're going to cl click on here or right click on here, press on copy. Now we can close out of this and we can close out of the browser because we actually do not need to download anything else off the internet. Okay, now we're back here to our two folders that we just created. We're going to double click to go into Steam CMD and in here we're just going to right click and paste and here's our Steam CMD application. Okay, now this is the part where you guys are going to copy you're going to go down to the video description, open up the description and in there I'm going to have the entire script uh, pasted into the description so that everybody can simply just highlight the whole script and copy it so that they can use it. 
So first things first, what we're going to do is press on start. We're going to start typing in notepad and you'll get the notepad will come up. So we're just going to open up that to get our uh, fresh brand new notepad. Now this is the part where you'll go to the description and copy the script. I'm just going to open it here. Uh, and this is the whole script. There's a little bit to it. Okay. So you're just gonna you're just gonna copy it out of the description, and then you're gonna come to your brand new notepad that you just opened up, and you're gonna paste it, and you'll get the whole script into this notepad. So just scroll back up to the top. And before we save this, we actually need to modify one part of this script, and that's this directory here. We need to modify this directory so that it reflects the actual directory that you have just created for your satisfactory server files. <coughs> so what we're going to do first is minimize that. We're going to come back to our file explorer. So um, we're in the Steam CMD folder this is not the correct folder we need to go back one and we'll be back here to our two folders that we created so we actually need to go into this satisfactory server folder so we're going to double click to go in there and then once we're in here at on the, on this address bar here we actually have the directory so what we're going to do is we're going to click into this little empty space here don't click on this drop down arrow just click on this little empty space to the right hand side one click and it's going to fully highlight that directory for us. I'm going to right click, copy, we can minimize this. We'll go back to our script and this is where it needs to be pasted. So just select this, go all the way up to the C and include the, the C and we're going to right click on here and just press on paste. So this should have us our correct directory to our satisfactory server files. Now, just be sure that you didn't accidentally delete the equal sign here. That has to be there. And also, just be careful to check that you didn't end up having any trailing backslashes at the end of this directory. If you ended up with a backslash there somehow, uh, that's not correct. So just come along here and delete that backslash. And so long as yours looks similar to this, we're all sweet, we're all good to go. So we can we can save this script now. Just come up to file, press on save as. Now once we get here, where you can see here we've already come to the Steam CMD directory. But if you didn't end up in that directory, just come back to your location where you created these two files, uh, sorry, two folders, and double click to go on your Steam CMD folder. Come down to the bottom here for your save as type. Just select that option and select the all files option. Okay, just, just double check that we've got all files written in here. Now we need to give this script a name. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, you can name it start server, you can name it run server, uh, I'm just going to call it satisfactory server. So once you've given it a name, we need to do one more thing, we just need to put a dot and type the letters BAT. So satisfactory server dot bat. Alright, now once yours looks like this, we're all good to save it. Okay, so that's been saved now and we're finished here with this script. We can actually close this, we don't need it anymore. I'm going to go back down to our file explorer, um, come back to our two folders and double click to go in the Steam CMD folder. So you can see now we have two files in here. Once we get to this point, this is where we can actually run this batch script file. What's going to happen from this point onwards is everything is going to be completely automated. So the whole installation process, the whole setup process and the whole startup process of the, the satisfactory server is all going to be completely automated. So all you have to do, just double click to run the batch file and you'll see the console will pop up. 
okay and here we have the console so because this is the very first time that you'll be running the console we're actually going to get a couple questions okay and so here you can see the first question do you want the server handler to automatically restart the server at midnight after updates have been downloaded so all this is going to do is it's going to set a parameter which is going to tell the server to restart if there's any updates so it'll download the updates first and at midnight it will um, it will automatically restart the server so it just it's another part of just completely automating the process so we're going to type yes in there for that one of course you can type no if you don't want it to do that so the next question is would you like to set a custom server port or use the utterly stupid default 7777 server port if you are opening this server through your router to the public internet I highly advise against using the 7777 port so again this is totally up to you um, if you just want to keep things simple and you're not fussed with uh, uh, setting up a custom port well then you can just type default in here otherwise if you prefer to set a more custom port uh, then you can type anything above 9000 okay so for the sake of this video I'm just going to type default so the last question and probably what I think is the most important question is by default the server will pause gameplay when no players are connected would you like to enable 24 7 game clock the game will continue to run while no players are connected so I think this is one of the most important perks about setting up your own dedicated server the ability to uh, set the server up so that it will run continuously even though there's no players connected all of your production all of your machines everything will keep uh, running even though there's nobody connected uh, it'll keep stocking up all of your storage containers uh, and so on and so forth so for this option I'm definitely going to type yes and then we'll hit enter and now the configuration has been saved so once this has happened you're not going to get asked these questions again uh, however if you do change your mind about any of these settings you can just delete the config.txt file uh, and then restart this console and you'll get asked those questions again um, so now what's happening is the steam cmd application is being downloaded and installed uh, it's downloading updates and it'll verify all of the files to make sure they're correct and after that's finished it'll move on to actually downloading the satisfactory server files And now we're now we're doing the actual download of the satisfactory server files and as you can see after we've answered those three configuration settings right at the very start uh, the rest of this entire process is completely completely automated you don't have to do anything else from this point onwards this script will handle absolutely everything um, so at, at this point in time I'm just going to uh, pause the video I'll wait for this download to get almost to the end and I'll come back to you okay guys well as you can see here so the script has fully downloaded the satisfactory server files now and it's just going through the validation process and that's about to be completed once that's finished the script will start the server and it will there yeah, as you can see so the the game server or the satisfactory server has now started up so this extra dialog box here is the ser the actual server itself as you can see here actually you can see sorry I just forgot that it has to do one more restart so what this is doing is it's just restarted the server and it only does it this one time 
on the initial setup process as you can see here uh, what it was doing is it was setting the server to have the 24-7 game clock and in order to do that it had to restart the server so it only does it that one time now this is the actual server console here and as you can see here this is the 7777 port which is what we set it to in the setup process right at the very beginning um, so that's the port that the server is running on um, so now that that's done so basically right now the whole entire server is up and running and you will be able to connect to the server um, don't close this window here don't don't close this console this this has to stay up and running all the time because what this does is it actually checks the status of the server so this is what will automatically restart the server if it ever crashes so if you're playing along and you're doing something pretty crazy on the server and just for whatever reason something goes wrong and the server crashes what's going to happen is this this script will automatically detect that it has crashed and it will restart the server automatically without you having to ever come back to this computer to do anything uh, what this script also does is it uh, as I said at the start it will automatically check for any updates and it does that daily uh, so it does it daily uh, if it ever detects there's uh, an update to the server files it will download that automatically and it will apply the update. If you answered yes to that question right at the start of the setup it, it will automatically restart the server as well to apply the new updates. 